Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today for the webinar, Extending Active Directory to Office 365. My name is Jean Lozano, and I will be the moderator. If you are having any issues with audio or seeing the presentation, please request assistance through the chat panel. If you are having difficulty seeing the slides, you can use the full screen feature in the bottom right corner or the top right corner if you are using Link 2013. You may submit questions at any point during the webinar through the chat and we'll address during the Q&A session. We'll catch your questions as they come in and get to the remaining ones at the end of the presentation. Today's slides and webinar recording will be sent to all attendees tomorrow. Make sure to stay until the end of the webinar for your chance to win a Microsoft Surface tablet. Okay, we're going to get ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce our speakers today, Mark Seeley, Intellinet's President and Senior Partner, and Stephen Lee, Octa's Director of Platform Solutions. Now I'm going to turn the webinar over to Mark. Thanks, Jean. Good afternoon, everyone. Again, my name is Mark Seeley, President and Senior Partner of Intellinet. Uh, today our featured guest speaker is Stephen Lee. He's Director of Platform Solutions at, at Octa, as it says there. And his role is to serve as a technology evangelist for Octa Platform, responsible for architecting solutions for strategic partnerships and customers. So we're glad to have Stephen with us here today. Before I get started, however, we're going to give a quick overview of IntelliNet, our services. Uh, for those not familiar with IntelliNet, we are a management consulting and Microsoft-centric technology services firm, founded in 1993, so celebrating our 20th year in business. Uh, about 900 customers, 5,000 projects, as you see. However, unlike a lot of systems integrators, IntelliNet's focus is not a technology-first model, but one that focuses mostly on the strategic definition around management consulting, focusing on items like change management, training, process, overall organizational readiness to make the technology implementations impactful to the company's business model. Uh, this past July, we were honored to be named Microsoft Southeast Partner of the Year for the second year in a row, as well as Microsoft's Customer Satisfaction Excellence Award uh, here in 2013. On today's webinar, we'll be discussing Office 365 and third-party interoperability, Octa AD and Office 365 integration. We'll look at a demo uh, with Stephen leading that to be able to understand their product and how it fits in the marketplace. We'll have some time open for Q&A that will use the link panel for questions. So feel free to submit those throughout the presentation as well. With that, I'll turn it over to Stephen for our presentation. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Great to be here. Um, as I've been introduced, I'm uh, here at Okta. Uh, the role is Director of Platform Solutions. and. You know, what we do here at Okta is, you know, provide a, a, a first class um, cloud identity management solution with um, basically pre-integrated solutions with, with different types of connectors, um, different SaaS applications. And obviously today the focus is on Office 365. But as we go through this presentation, you'll get a sense of what it is that Okta does um, in terms of, just give me one second here, sorry. In terms of what Okta does and how we, we kind of build out these so-called pre-integrated solution. Now, back to Office 365, this is the main focus. And when you look at how Office 365 and how Microsoft have traditionally offered federated solution, right? Federated meaning, well, if you have an on-prem system like an on-prem active directory, your primary identity management infrastructure is on-prem. How do you federate that out to a Microsoft product? Um, before Office 365, I actually worked on the integration for uh, Microsoft BPOS, the, the older solution, uh, that is sort of the, 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 um, the parent of, of Office 365, if you want to call that. And, and if you look at even other products that Microsoft has had, um, the main federated solution was, you know, ADFS. Um, and it's obviously it's a, it's a Microsoft product. It integrates 
fairly well. It is free from a software perspective, but obviously you have to download. Um, you probably have to get Windows servers and things like that to, to host your ADFS. But in general, it's, it's always been Microsoft products only. The integration is very much Microsoft-centric. And when you look at customers that are running things like Exchange and, and obviously now moving to Office 365, that's not always the case. People could be using other, other products. Before I joined Okta, I spent many years at Oracle. So a lot of big customers that are running Exchange that are thinking of moving to Office 365, they already have solutions like Oracle or maybe an IBM or CA SiteMind or something like that. And I think as a result, Microsoft realized that. And, and last year, they, they really started to open up the platform and um, allow third party interoperability to exist with their products. And one of the things that they did was they actually invited a lot of us um, to join a validation program for Office 365 and, and really opening up the various options that they're allowing for federated single sign-on and also provisioning. Now, these next set of slides they're taking out of um, this great site called Ignite. Um, they talk a lot about Office 365 integration, and this was taken out of one of their webcasts from a, a Microsoft consultant um, and Microsoft employee. So these, these are actually Microsoft slides, so disclaimer there. Um, but they talk about the federation option. Now, you look at the three options there. The blue one, obviously, is ADFS. And you know, ADFS has been there for a long time to, to provide federated support, whether it's through WSFED or, or through SAML. Um, and, and definitely a lot of Microsoft customers use that. But like I said, they, um, opening up to third-party solution is important. And if you look at the two other options, the red and the black, you know, able to use something open source like Shibboleth um, to, um, to allow federation to happen, or actually integrating with third-party STS. So STS is Secure Token Services. Um, without going too technical into that, really, you look at single sign-on using various protocols. When, when the protocol is being used, you're exchanging a token to authenticate a user. So in a generic term, a third-party single sign-on system oftentimes can be referred to as a, as a secure token service as well. And that really is the, the area that we're focusing on. Because Okta is a cloud-based solution, and what we do is provide ways to single sign-on into various products, uh, various SaaS applications, and on-prem apps. And it's really the ability to, to create different types of tokens that, that allows us to, to be a very powerful solution um, for you to authenticate into various systems. Now, single sign-on is just one piece. Um, with a product like Office 365, the onboarding, offboarding flow is also very important. Um, you have to be able to, to, to drive that in an automated fashion, especially if you're a company of of a decent size, even you know, a thousand people company, there's a lot of turning over, people leaving and coming. And in the on-prem world, if you had exchange, everything would have been driven off of AD. And naturally, that's also something that you want to do with Office 365. And the main solution that Microsoft offers with Microsoft technology is Dursync. And Dursync has been around for a very long time. Dursync was there even in the BPOS days. And what it what it is is really a small small piece of software that you install, then it, it, it pushes data out to Active Directory every few hours by default, or you, you can configure it to, to have a, a, a shorter um, interval. But essentially, that's the, the, the Microsoft model. Um, but increasingly, with Microsoft opening up their platform, where you look at Office 365, it really is sitting on top of their Azure platform. Um, the Azure platform has been talked a lot about by developers, by um, people that are trying to build applications, if you think of a full middleware stack, right? In the old days, you might buy a BEA or, or, or an IBM WebSphere to get everything from the app server down to the database and all that. Well, the Azure platform gives you just that. And these newer generations of Microsoft products, they actually sit on top of those. And Office 365 is no exception. And them opening up that interface to allow third party to integrate it with things like PowerShell and also Graph API. Right, a REST-based API, much more modern than, than the PowerShell scripting language. And, and with Microsoft opening that up, it gives us um, third-party um, products additional um, ways of integrating with Office 365 and a lot of other Microsoft products for that matter. And the great thing, though, is not that we're, we're just poking in the dark trying to figure out how this works. We actually work closely with Microsoft as partners to, to validate these solutions. They actually take our software, 
and they do all the testing and they give us kind of a certification matrix back to tell us what works and what not. And until we pass, we're not really a, a kind of a, a validated partner um, to, to have a solution being rolled out with Microsoft and have, have the right channel to get to their support to help customers like yourself. Um, but with that, it gives you, the customer, a, a, a ton of flexibility in terms of deploying a solution like this, right? Um, if you have CA, if you have Oracle, you don't have to worry about ADFS. I mean, if this was two years ago, you'd be thinking very hard on how to integrate this with ADFS. And now you don't. You get to reuse your investment. And you get to do this with a lot of confidence because it's a verified solution by Microsoft. And we're also a verified partner. So when it comes to troubleshooting, rolling out, you've got two companies working together to help you out. Um, it is something that, that is validated, and it makes a huge difference. And the coordinate support is something that you will get. Um, and I think that's important because there are times when people have tried to build solutions with Microsoft products. They may or may just be ad hoc or one time or things built by SIs. And when there's a problem, you have to go back to that through that channel. Microsoft people don't know anything about it. So in this situation, there, there's a much deeper level of coordination between the two parties. And, and it's, it's, it, you know, we've, we've definitely rolled out a lot of these and, and we definitely see a lot of great coordination in, in terms of fixing issues between our support and also Microsoft support. Um, here are just some of the names. Obviously, my favorite is Okta, but it, like I said, this is a, a kind of an open, um, generic initiative that Microsoft has, has um, taken on. And as you can see, there are a lot of other federated single sign-on solutions out there, um, um, many of which are, are kind of the old school stuff that I've been talking about, right? The NetIQ Oracle, CA and IBM, um, and paying a lot of these on-prem solutions. And, and from a cloud perspective, you know, Okta clearly is, is the leader here. Um, from a cloud identity management standpoint. And, and as I said earlier, this effort with Office 365, um, it's great because more and more Microsoft products are being built on top of the Azure platform. And that integration for authentication and, and also user provisioning is going to be the same. Um, so with other products like Microsoft Intune, Windows Intune, Microsoft Dynamics, um, their CRM products, and a whole slew of others being, being built on top of the Azure platform, um, this is guaranteed to be a future-proof solution in terms of authentication and provisioning. And the great thing is we're a cloud solution. We roll out every week. So when there's a change or there's an enhancement that's needed, it's very easy for us to work with Microsoft and make the right change. Um, in fact, as Office 365 was, was going through its evolution, they, Microsoft has had internal releases too. And, and we've had to make some changes to, to kind of make sure that everything is, is working great. And that coordination is, is great. And, and very quickly, we can make changes to, to uptake new APIs, for example, um, that, that Microsoft is offering for us to do what we need to do. So that's kind of a high-level introduction of, of what this, this partnership is. And I'm going to go a little deeper. And what I really want to do here is to educate everyone here what, what it means to do an integration with Office 365. Um, I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the Microsoft approach. Um, some of the technology are things that um, many of you would be would be familiar with. Um, and then I want to dig deep into Okta and tell you exactly what we do with Office 365, but also generically what Okta as an identity platform will provide you even beyond Office 365. Um, but let's take a look at the, the, the Microsoft approach. So the main two main things, I talked about these products already. Um, federated single sign-on, really it's, it's going to be Active Directory. Federation Services is something that's been around for a long time. Um, a new version just got rolled out recently. Um, but this is something that you're going to have to maintain yourself. It is a Microsoft product, so there's a ton of documentation out there um, on TechNet that you, that you can definitely read through. Um, but then do you really want to read through all that documentation? On the synchronization side, it is Directory Sync, so Microsoft DirSync. Again, a little piece of software that you need to deploy on an on-prem server. And then there's a ton of, ton of considerations that, that, that you have to think through. I mean, on the surface, you look at both of these, they are free. Um, but when you start digging deeper, you realize that they're, they're, there's definitely a higher price to pay. And, you know, this one slide kind of says it all. I, the previous slide, I had one box for ADFS. And, and really, if you double click into that, it will probably blow up into something like this. Um, relatively small diagram. This is actually a diagram from, from uh, TechNet. Um, where Microsoft explains how to achieve kind of a bare minimum XJ configuration. So if you kind of look at this, um, on, on the far left is, is where the actual ADFS servers are. 
Um, and there's two of them. So you need two because you, you want some sort of an exchange configuration. This is a mission critical app. I assume for most of you, email is a mission critical application. So you should make sure that authentication is also highly available. So you deploy a server. You have to think about XJ. You're going to deploy two of these. And I'll get to that little SQL database a little later on. Now, because this has to be a, an, an outward facing endpoint, remember Office 365 is outside. Um, it's going to be hitting your ADFS server that's sitting on-prem, um, tied directly to your Active Directory. Um, this whole system needs to be protected. And the way Microsoft solves the problem is it, it offers basically a, an additional component called the Federation you know, you know, Server Proxies. Basically a proxy server that you would throw probably in your DMZ. It's at, right out there at, at the boundary of your network. And it's there to kind of filter through the traffic that's coming in um, from Office 365 or whichever other you know, service provider out there needing ADFS as, as an IDP. So for that piece, again, you've got a Nick Chase story that you need to handle. So very quickly, you've got four servers, just, just to have a normal um, setup with XJ. And the moment, you know, once you've got the boxes all set up, then you have to think about the next thing. What is the next thing? Well, there's volume. How many users do you have? How many different objects do you need to handle? And that's kind of where the SQL Server comes into the picture, um, having a dedicated database as a backend for the ADFS servers. So you've got that piece, now you've got easily five boxes, and you know what SQL Server, um, you know, I primarily don't talk to database admins, but I'm sure if you're talking to a database admin, if you need XA there, that little SQL um, server there probably blows up into maybe two boxes. Maybe you already have some sort of a database farm uh, where you have a ton of these SQL servers running, but regardless, it is an additional piece of resource that you need to handle. And, and this is kind of a bare minimum XA configuration, right? Um, two of each. And um, so in reality, what, what started off as a, as a free offering now is a free offering with a ton of work, a lot of servers, and, and you as a business owner trying to figure out how to deploy Office 365 will have to talk to your network admins to figure out how to get those proxy servers in, in, into the DMZ. So it, it is a very, it's, it, it's definitely a substantial investment. Now, a little bit more to it too. Um, if you actually blow this up when it comes to handling multiple domains, and, and any of you, if, if you're a big enough company, um, global company, um, where users are distributed, maybe through M&A, you've, you've acquired a ton of different domains or disconnected forests and things like that, you have to take that into consideration as well. Now, there are other solutions that Microsoft provides. If you're looking at a free solution, obviously, ADFS and DirSync are the two things. Um, if you step one up, it, it be, you know you might have to pull in uh, Microsoft FIM into the picture where, where it does have some capability of handling multiple domains, disjoint domains, and forests. But without that, without going into that area, just simply using ADFS, you're going to have to kind of double up the picture that I just showed you now to be able to support um, different domains that are not joined to each other. So there's a lot of kind of network domain expertise, um, servers, HA, and things that you need to worry about. And it's not just with um, it's not just with ADFS, but also with uh, respect to things like um, Dersync. So with Dersync, this is kind of a hardware requirement um, from 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 the same presentation that I showed early, earlier. Um, there's requirement on on boxes, so Dersync is free. But um, if you put that piece of software and the number of objects that need to be synchronized out of AD, and by the way, number of objects is different from number of users. When you do synchronization, um, you've got other things like you know calendar-related information, mail quota, um, email aliases, groups. So very quickly, that the number of objects will add up. As you can see, you don't have to go very far um, before you need to hit a relatively beefy box. I mean, if you look at the fourth row, that's 30 gig of memory and 300 gig of hard disk. I mean, that, that that's not a small box. Um, so there's that consideration there. And with Dersync, I would say maybe it's slightly less mission critical because technically Office 365 will continue to function even if your, your Dersync doesn't sync. Um, at, at runtime during authentication and authorization, um, Dersync is not needed. But it does provide you with that um, synchronization capability every few hours to pick up new users, pick up group changes, or even deactivate an account if someone has left the company. So. 
um, at the end of it, it's still something that you need to worry about. You need to find a box and, and obviously worry about these various um, hardware recommendations. So that's kind of where I want to segue into a solution like Okta. And, you know, as I said earlier, we're a cloud-based solution, 100% um, in the cloud. Um, many of our customers have Active Directory. I'd say up to 95% of our customers have Active Directory. Um, we also support other non-AD LDAP servers also. So if you're thinking of deploying Office 365 and you don't have uh, a history of running Exchange, you don't have an Active Directory infrastructure, you still want to use it as a cloud email solution, we can definitely help you with that. But with this presentation, I'm going to focus mainly on AD because I know most of you um, probably have Active Directory in place. So that's, that's the discussion I want to revolve around. And Active Directory integration with Okta is, is a key piece of, of our solution. Um, so as you see in this picture, Okta is out in the cloud. Um, you've got various types of cloud applications sitting out there, like Google, Salesforce, or Box. And the biggest problem you have to deal with is the fact that your Active Directory is in-house. You've got employees needing to access these applications um, in-house, but also outside. So how do you actually tie the two together? So remember the previous picture I had ADFS. You put all that stuff in there behind the firewall. You deploy the proxy servers. You deploy the, the ADFS server. But with Okta, the integration is a little different. It's way more cloud heavy. The entire solution sits in the cloud. End user access, admin access, everything sits in the cloud. And the key piece is the Okta AD agent. Very small footprint, 300 kilobyte size. It runs as a Windows service. And you basically go to any Windows server that's domain joined, and you can download this agent and, and set it up very quickly. It has a, an, install, uh, an installation wizard that would walk you through um, all that. Um, and you can literally set it up in about, you know, I'd say six, six minutes, six to ten minutes maybe, five to ten minutes um, with the right credentials. And the agent does multiple things. Um, obviously, you can see the arrows going both ways from one side to the other. The first thing is remote user authentication. So the main thing about authenticating into an app in the cloud is, well, how do I provide my credentials? And in this case, Okta actually acts as the identity provider for your enterprise. So when it's integrated with Active Directory, when your user is trying to log in via Active Directory, they actually provide their AD credentials to Okta out in the cloud. Now, we don't store credentials. So that's one great thing about our product. And it's, it's a big security concern for a lot of people, too. You know, we're not making copies of your Active Directory credentials outside. When you enter your username and password outside at Okta, the agent actually picks up the job. And it, at runtime, it dynamically validates the credentials against Active Directory. And the way it does that is, is through a long pole. So the firewall change there, there is none. Um, you might think, oh, do I need to punch a hole in the firewall so Okta can talk to the agent? Well, like many modern on-prem agent that talks back to SaaS servers, our agent talks through port 443, uh, basically HTTPS, outbound long polling Okta, keeps pinging Okta to see if there's something for it to do. And when it sees a job, OK, I need to validate credentials. I'm going to pick them up, and I'll, uh, I'll authenticate the users against directory. So that's one of the many jobs that the Okta agent does. Um, second thing that it does is to facilitate what we call integrated Windows authentication. People might know it as single sign-on, uh, just, you know, generic sing Windows single sign-on or Kerbal-based single sign-on or Windows native authentication. They're all but one thing. The idea there is if I'm on-prem and I've joined the domain, I'm domain joined. I provided my credentials when I did Control-Alt-Delete and I enter my credentials. Why do I have to do it again? And that's exactly what we do. So as part of the integration, Okta has the ability to figure out that you're from behind the firewall, looks like you're domain joined, and I'm going to validate you. If I can validate you, I'm going to let you in. And once you're in, I'll take you to whichever application you're trying to get to. So it retains that on-prem, seamless, single sign-on experience that many of you are accustomed, are accustomed to. So that's the second thing. Both of these um, are related to authentication. But one of the very important things that the agent does for cloud applications is in the area of data synchronization, specifically user provisioning, onboarding, and deprovisioning. And, and what the agent can also do is periodically push information like security groups, like user information, user profile, and all that into um, the cloud. And the way it does it is it actually pushes all that information into Okta. 
then Okta takes care of the provisioning to the various applications. And there's a reason for that, and I'll get to that in a second. So Okta gets all the information, and it'll figure out, you know, do I need to go to, um, you know, go to meeting to, to put certain information there? Do I need to go to Office 365 to update someone's location because he or she has moved from New York City to San Francisco? Things like that. So Okta becomes that orchestration engine, but it also acts as that meta directory of user data and group data. Because people, you know, applications can pull us for that, and we have APIs for that. When we integrate with these applications out there, like the way we do with Office 365, there's a direct integration between Okta and Office, so we push that information out to them rather than having them pulling um, from us. Because obviously, you know, I'm not going to expect Microsoft to write some little gadget to be, you know, pulling stuff from Okta. So our ability to use their APIs, and in this case, a combination of PowerShell and their Graph API, um, to push things out into the Azure AD directory. Um, and depending on who the vendor is, um, we'll pick and choose which APIs to use to, to try to facilitate that. Obviously, it's not there for all SaaS app, but for Office 365, this is a pretty well-built um, infrastructure. And if you spend a bit of time looking at this, this picture, this is the way Okta integrates with, with many applications. Um, and what we do is we build a pre-integrated solution with these apps. So you don't really have to do anything. You go into our admin console. A few clicks will allow you to integrate with those applications. And then Okta will act as that orchestration engine to make sure that everything is up to date. And when it comes to single sign-on, we also have the pre-integrated um, SSO integration acting as a, as, as a secure token service to, to basically provide, whether it is SAML, in the case of Office 365, is WSFET. And we'd be able to do all that without you writing a single line of code. In fact, without you worrying um, the logistics of, of anything that's that's there. It's, it's a matter of just integrating. Pure integration, exchanging of pieces of endpoint info and certificates, it's actually really simple. It's the technology underneath and the actual code, understanding SAML and WSFAN and all that, that's complicated. And we, we want to take that burden away from you. So quick summary on this. Super easy to use, and it just works. Very simple agent, like I said. Very small footprint. No network configuration required. And the great thing about the agent is if you download multiples of those and have them run in the same domain, talking to the same Okta org, we immediately recognize that it is going to be an XA configuration, and we start using those additional agents in an XA settings for failovers and load balancing. So extremely easy. We've already talked through all those things for you. And very broad functionality, synchronization with AD, um, auto deactivation of, 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 of users in Okta. And again, it's a two-step thing. If I deactivate someone in Okta, Okta will then decide based on policies if I go out and deactivate users in the various apps. And in this case, I could also go deactivate your account in Office 365. We will never go out to delete any account. It's always a soft delete, obviously for audit and various types of reasons. And maybe users might, might be reactivated later on. We never do a hard delete. And then delegate authentication for Okta to AD. If you're on-prem, you get to benefit from Windows desktop login. If you're outside, you will be providing your credentials. And again, not cached. I'm, di I'm dynamically validating your credentials against Active Directory. And then a tight Windows integration via Windows desktop login. So that's kind of a generic view of what we do with Active Directory. And let's jump a little deeper and look at what we do with respect to Office 365. So now you get you get the get the idea of Okta pulling in data from AD, doing authentication, um, being able to do synchronization. Specifically with Office 365, this is the picture that we want you all to stay away from. This is the Microsoft solution, and as I said before, right, ADFS, it's free, but there's a lot more that you need to do. Um, and if you look at this picture, this is what the topology would actually look like. You've got your AD domain controller. Um, and remember, if you've got multiple domains, multiple fours that are disjoint, this picture gets a little bit more complicated. But you need to handle your Windows Server farm where you've got ADFS running. You do need to make changes in the firewall to talk to Office 365. And then separately, you've got uh, uh, you know, DirSync running um, underneath. So you've got ADFS, you've got network changes, you have a ton of software and hardware um, that you're going to have to maintain. Now, where we want to take you with Okta is a solution that looks more like this. So what is the difference? The heavyweight got pushed out. I don't want you to have to deal with all this behind the firewall. I don't want you to maintain anything. You should have to worry about a little 300 kilobyte size agent, or maybe multiples of those, running on, on, a, on a Windows server, any Windows server that's domain joined. 
bulk of the work has been done outside in the Okta cloud as a pre-integrated solution. So Okta replacing ADFS, as that's the main difference, obviously. Network configuration, so no network configuration is needed. Very lightweight AD agent for both authentication and provisioning. And then the dursing is being done by Okta using basically PowerShell and API um, combined. Um, some operations can only be done through PowerShell right now, and then we can do certain things via Graph API. The ideal thing is at some point moving completely into Graph API. Microsoft is improving the support and, and, and the Graph API um, to allow access to, to, to the AD Azure. So I've been using the term Graph API for a bit too. So just one bit of Graph API 101. It's, you know, the Azure platform has um, Azure Active Directory sitting out there, um, which has users and groups information um, sitting in there. It could be um, information that's natively defined in the Azure AD, or it could be information that's been synchronized via Dursing. And what the Graph API allows us to do is through a REST interface, we can go and make changes and consume that information from the Azure Active Directory. So as a result, we have the ability to go in and create new objects and make changes um, very much like what Dursync would do. Um, so just, just kind of a Graph API 101. And then, of course, XA Ready. Um, simple picture here, Okta itself as a cloud service. We run on AWS. Um, XA is a very important thing for us there, and, and we have that cloud aspect covered. The Okta agent also has XA covered, um, so everything is, is, is pretty much covered there. Um, give you an idea of the Dursync option, and I'd like to highlight this because it's important as you're thinking through your deployment, um, whether you're an Exchange user for a long time thinking of completely removing Exchange, or you're an on-prem Exchange thinking of kind of a hybrid deployment, or you're new starting fresh um, using Office 365, those different scenarios would, would, would um, lead you down a slightly different path. The Okta solution today, as I said earlier, is a combination of PowerShell and Graph API. So a lot of our customers, being fairly big customers running Exchange, they want a hybrid coexistence mode because they're migrating out of on-prem Exchange. There might be a period of time when both solutions will be working, and in some cases, because of compliance reasons, certain email accounts have to be managed on site. So they're going to have Exchange still, even with Office 365 catering majority of the employees. So as a result, for this hybrid and coexistence mode, Right now, using Okta for federated single sign-on and using Microsoft Dursing for provisioning is the recommended solution. Still, you, you have Dursing to worry about, um, but the majority of the heart, your headache is going to be around federated single sign-on and deploying ADFS. So we want to remove that and allow you to, to have a much easier solution. Now, if you're starting from scratch, where there, there isn't a whole lot of legacy exchange data that you need to extract out of Active Directory, you don't need the coexistence mode, then you can leverage Okta for basic provisioning. This is done via, again, PowerShell and Graph API today. And for that, we can pull users out of AD um, into Okta, and then we'll figure out a basic set of attributes to be pushed out to Office 365 to provision an account. And in this case, there's no Dursync. Okta will, will act as that meta directory that drives the entire provisioning flow. And the second half of this year, really towards the end of this year, um, we will have the ability to, to provide the full coexistence mode with Okta, um, effectively replacing Dursync. Um, for those of you who might not know, I mean, Dursync actually pulls in about 130 attributes for each user. Um, there's a ton of stuff. So it's a slightly more heavyweighted synchronization um, operation that we need to handle. So we look to have that ready um, towards the end of this year um, so you can actually completely replace Dursync um, and, and also migrate fully to Graph API. Um, PowerShell has been there for a long time, and I think for a lot of you admins out there, there are reasons for using PowerShell to manage Office 365. It is easier. But from an authentication, provisioning, um, Dursync perspective, um, we want to be able to completely move to Graph API um, as a REST interface. If you look at the way we integrate with most of the other SaaS apps like, you know, Google and Salesforce and Box and all that, it's just it's full REST. I mean, there's no such thing as PowerShell for these newer companies, right? But PowerShell has, has always been there for, for the Microsoft community for the longest time. So these are the directory sync option, and, and, and we definitely look forward to the end of this year when, when we, we can completely replace Dursync um, for your Office 365 integration. Um, quickly, I'm not going to spend too much time here. Um, it's our validation matrix. This was actually something that was sent out by Microsoft. Um, so as you can see, pretty much everything, these are all the generic use cases that they support. The one that's not supported is a Windows integrated authentication for the thick link client, 
We're actually working on that right now. Um, it, it, it was an optional thing, and, and when we first did the validation, um, we, we actually didn't basically didn't do it because it was optional. Um, and I think with most of the other third-party vendors, that's also a red line right now, but we're looking um, to solve that in the, in the near future. Um, so with that, I'm just going to quickly show you um, what the admin page looks like. Um, and let me just quickly get there to make sure I can show you. So this is the Okta admin console. And as I said before, everything is out in the cloud. So um, when I log into Okta, and this is a demo user, but when I log into Okta as an end user, you get all the list of applications that you have, and I just click on whatever I want to go, um, and, and it will single sign on into that app. There are different flows, too. If you go to the app directly, it'll kick you back to Okta for login, and then you'll never see that user homepage. It'll return you back to the app directly. Now, what I really want to show you is the app configuration and, and how Okta actually deals with this. Um, applications in Okta is it's basically a very simple instance, um, and it, it represents your real-life SaaS app that's sitting out there. Every app has a really similar setup. There's general which allow you to specify some generic information. In the case of Office, give me your domain, because I need to know where to go to and how to look you up. Um, in the case of other products like NetSuite, it might be a company ID. Um, it, it could be a, a login URL and things like that. So we've already figured all this out. You don't have to know what we do with this, because we'll figure out where to, how to get to the APIs and how to hit the endpoints. When it comes to single sign-on, this is the key piece, right? It's WS flat. It's complicated. Guess what? We give you all the instructions of how to set this thing up with PowerShell. We have all the endpoints open. We're a cloud app, so all these endpoints, the moment you instantiate this instance, all these endpoints are active. And all you have to do now is tell Microsoft, tell Office 365 where to go. And there are two different PowerShells command here. Really, one tells your Office 365 instance that, hey, I want to be federated. Um, please open up the instance so that you, you allow external users in addition to local users. And then the second one, if your domain's already federated, this is the one that tells Office 365, hey, these are all the Okta endpoints. When people try to log into Office, whether it's through the Outlook Click Client or Link Client or through the web, these are the endpoints that you would go to um, to, to send the various WS Fed requests. And it's up to Okta to figure out how, what to, how to respond to those and send a WS Fed response back. So you don't have to know anything. You just have to know how to run two PowerShell commands. And the moment you're done with this, you're basically up and running. Um, I'm not going to show you too much of, of the, the actual login. Login is you log in and you can see it. One of the things I do want to highlight is kind of on the people side. Um, you've got apps. You've got people. That's just what identity management solutions have. And this is sort of where you manage different people. And this is also where you manage your directories. And to add a directory, you basically come here and say, you know, I'm going to add an instance of the directory, and what you do is set up an AD agent. So you basically come to this page, you hit Add Agent on the Windows server where you want to do this, and then executable will be downloaded. You go to the wizard, and boom, this little box will show up the moment that agent reaches out to the Okta org. And you see this extra spaces here is really for you to deploy more of these things so you have HA. And there's a bunch of settings here for you to really configure which OU you want to go to, how do you want to configure the, the Okta username. Um, there's a lot more that Okta does um, with respect to Active Directory. We can provision into AD. We can do different mastering. That's not the topic of discussion for today. So I'm basically going to stop there, give you a small glimpse of what we do. Uh, and I think that this will at least hope you get a better understanding of what this, this really powerful Okta pre-integrated solution is all about. So with that, I'm going to just quickly shift back to the PowerPoint. Um, just a few closing slides, a summary. Um, let me get back there. OK. So quick summary. Um, to compare and contrast the two solutions, um, Okta and Microsoft, obviously Okta being a fully cloud solution built in XA with Microsoft, yes, you can achieve it, but there's a lot more work that you need to do. From a federated single sign-on perspective, it's a pre-integrated solution with Office 365, but also thousands and thousands of other pre-integrated solutions. You saw in my demo org that there were a lot of other apps there. The integration is exactly the same, just as easy and just as powerful. With Microsoft, you have to worry about how to set up ADFS claims, also dealing with the, the, the join force and domain and the complexity. 
And then from a provisioning standpoint, you have to worry about dosing, and additional hardware, and the SQL Server with, with Microsoft. Again, everything from the Okta perspective, you're going to be handling all this through the cloud. It's very easy to do. And again, it is pre-integrated. And you need to think kind of beyond just Office 365. I know our context here is that. But as cloud-first companies, you're all trying to move away from on-prem solutions and, and really think of a future-proof solution. Don't just think about today. And because of that, we want to offer you Octa free for Office 365. And we have this program for Octa Cloud Connect. Whenever you select Octa with one application, we really want you to try it. This is so good that we want you to try it free for one application. So pick Office 365. You can go to our site and sign up. And very quickly, we'll have an org spun up for you. Um, everything is on demand. So within, within seconds, literally, you get an email back, and you'll be able to start trying out the integration. It's great. It's easy. Of course, our main goal is to, to want you to enjoy the solution and then use it for other SaaS deployments, as I and I'm very sure many of you would have. But start with us for Office 365. We do offer the Cloud Connect program for several other applications as well. And also want to just touch on SharePoint. We've also recently rolled out a SharePoint integration, super powerful WS Fed uh, with SharePoint on-prem, and I, because it's a Microsoft audience. I know many of you would have that too, but it's the same idea. Pre-integrated, super easy to roll out. Don't have to worry about ADFS or anything like that. So with that uh, comes to the end of kind of my piece, and I'm going to um, switch it back to Mark um, to continue with the rest of the presentation. Great. Thanks so much. So we'll transition now into some q and A. I I know, actually, let's go through some of the other jump starts here. So actually, Stephen had mentioned the idea of the free Okta Cloud Connect model for one application. We'd like to encourage you to take advantage of that. Intel and it's also offering three other free opportunities for you to get involved with, uh, whether you're a customer of us or Microsoft or Okta already. The first is a half-day strategy session. Uh, this model across all three of these are really relevant to uh, signing up by this Friday. We'll remind you of that on the back end with a survey for you to fill out. But that's a half day where we'll come in and talk with you about strategy around overall cloud strategy, technology, process, change management, et cetera, around the Microsoft offerings of Office 365, Azure, Intune, and Okta from an enterprise uh, management perspective. It's available to all customers here on the webinar and phone today. The other two avenues are relevant to a Office 365 fast track pilot and a, a broader workshop around that. The middle box is relevant for EA customers, customers that have a Microsoft Enterprise Agreement. And with that, there are elements called DPS vouchers or given through software assurance. You're allowed to earmark three of those days towards IntelliNet to help you with their Office 365 jumpstart. It's a detailed defined model to be able to give you technology readiness, as well as live production-ready models in a pilot environment for your organization. So if you've not started on that, we'd be happy to help you out with that strategy as well as workshops. And then finally, for those that uh, potentially aren't EA customers, if you have not started Office 365, we'd like to help you out with that as well. There's a one-day offering around a fast-track pilot that gets Office 365 into a production model within your environment. We use up to about 25 users so you can understand and see what it looks like within your environment, uh, disconnected from all the avenues to your corporate network, but so you can see how it works. We'd be happy to help you out with that avenue. So with that, uh, we're going to move into Q&A, and I'll turn it back over to Gene, our moderator, to host those question and answer sessions. Thank you, Mark. Looks like we've received a few questions coming through the chat panel. And the first question is to Stephen. Stephen, there's a question or actually more of an explanation or to revisit the graph API you mentioned during your session. Yeah, so I, no, hang on. I've unmuted myself. Great. Um, apologize. I probably should have spent a little bit more time on that. So. Um, Microsoft, as, as a developer platform, has, has opened up this um, Microsoft Graph API and allowing, it, allowing you to access 
things are in the Azure directory. So if you look at the platform, what what you, you what you can do if you're building an application, um, you, you leverage you can leverage Azure AD as a directory where you have users and groups and things like that. And really, whether you're building an app on top of that or you're building infrastructure around it to support provisioning and uh, or deprovisioning or or Authorization changes, you know, administration tools around authorization. You want to be able to make changes to those objects, and it's not just modification, right? It includes also addition. Now, essentially, because Office 365 is built on top of um, the Azure platform, its underlying user store is Azure AD. And if you want to make changes to, you know, add users, remove users, and things like that, you're effectively making changes to to Azure AD. And what the Graph API allows third party like ourselves, you know, to, to do is to have, to be able to make changes, basically CRUD operations in, in Azure AD, whether it is managing um, email related attributes for users or just the, the actual user object and groups and aliases and things like that. Um, and effectively replacing what Dersync does. Um, and, and it's, you know, Graph API is still growing and improving. So right now our solution is sort of a combination of PowerShell and Graph API. Um, but very soon we will be able to kind of remove the whole thing and just do a, just just do a pure Graph API integration from from Okta. So really, you know, nothing you know magical there. It's it's uh, the Microsoft's REST interface for you to to have access to um, the various objects within Azure AD, and that's really what the Graph API is. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, Mark, it looks like the next question is for you that came over actually via email. Uh, there's a lot of questions about licensing. Could you provide a high-level view of commitments to, to licensing? Yeah, so uh, obviously it, uh, it relates from a customer-by-customer customer basis. So Intellin, it is a reseller of Okta, and so we can provide the software uh, SaaS model as well as the implementation services. But at a high level, as uh, Stephen mentioned, there's the entry point, potentially the Okta Cloud Connect is a free program to be able to try it for one application. As Okta now has probably about 2,000 or so applications across the whole in, uh, entire platform, whether it be Salesforce or Workday or uh, a variety of different uh, SaaS models, there's enterprise level licensing as well as SSO only licensing, as well as uh, an availability for connectors through your um, partners and customer base, more in a portal-based custom environment from a usage perspective. So those are the, the four high-level licensing parameters. We'd be happy to talk with each of you guys on a one-off basis on what that looks like um, as appropriate. Please feel free to mention that on your survey and we can do a follow-up. The other interesting perspective, uh, as a lot of this is both a high availability security perspective, um, there is an ROI modeling tool that we can look at for your individual circumstance to be able to see what that um, ROI perspective is, both from the hardware, software, and personnel cost for your business. Great. Thank you, Mark. It looks like here the next question that also came over via email is to Chad, who is Intellinet's Director of Cloud Services. And the question is, how have others succeeded in connective, connecting Active Directory to cloud-based offerings? And the second part to the question is, how should a company evaluate at, tra at transitioning in terms of timing going from hybrid environment to a full cloud-based application? Okay, great. So in terms of how organizations are tying their on-prem directory services to cloud-based um, services, obviously it's somewhat dependent on the vendor, but in most cases a um, federated environment is required. So we discussed um, Active Directory federated services as being um, kind of the the um, baseline for that. That's, um, that's the Microsoft solution to integrate with their own directory services. Um, obviously Okta is um, uh, another method of doing so without having to put the on-premises infrastructure in place. So there are two or three different ways you can uh, kind of link your environments together. But really, um, the first question you have to ask is, from the solutions that you're looking to roll out, what's the desired end state? Um, how tightly do I need to integrate my directories to be able to really plan out what's the solution that you really need to work towards? And then as far as timing goes, um, that often is dependent upon um, what the level of commitment of the organization is to moving to the cloud-based services. So for instance, 
If you're an organization that wants to try out a cloud-based service, you're not fully committed um, to moving forward or not, you want to pilot it, for instance, we'll often recommend that you do a cloud-only pilot, um, just taking a subset, small group of niche users, putting them in a cloud-only solution with no integration, have them try the solution out, and then decide after the pilot whether it's worth moving forward with. Whereas, if you have already bought into the concept and you've already um, made the commitment to the solution, then it's often uh, best to go ahead and proceed with some form of um, federation or, or synchronization to speed the, the adoption of the process. That's um, you know, especially the case when you have a workload that's already been hosted on-prem, and consequently, as you're moving your users to the cloud-based version, you obviously don't want to uh, to deprecate their experience um, when you um, when you migrate them up. Thank you, Chad. We received another question, and this is uh, going to be appropriate for all the callers on, the, on with us. And this is to you, Stephen. Um, the question is, how do you push Active Directory to the cloud completely and do away with on-prem Active Directory services? It's a great question, and I think um, people have to understand sort of where, where, where Active Directory sits and what it really does, right? There is... In Active Directory, there's the LDAP side to it. Um, that's part of my background. Definitely when I was at Oracle, did a lot of work on LDAP. And as an LDAP server, you're dealing with just users and groups, and, and that's great. I think from that perspective, looking at something like Okta, um, taking care of users and groups to drive provisioning and authorization policies, that's perfectly great. Um, can you completely remove it? So I'll, I'll kind of talk about a couple of our customers, right? There are customers that we have that don't have Active Directory. Well, why is that? They use Okta as a pure cloud directory. We act as their identity provider for all of their applications. And they don't need it because they don't have a big Windows infrastructure. Um, they're, you know, it's a new company. They're small. People are using Macs. They really don't have uh, Windows Server and Active Directory in place to, to drive the domain infrastructure. And really, it, it, it comes back to the domain infrastructure that you have, right? AD as, a, as an LDAP server, users and groups, yes, that can be completely pushed outside um, of your premise and be, be held in the cloud, like in the case with Okta. But if you're using AD for other things to drive your network, your printers, um, you've got group policies within it that drives software distribution within your domain. Um, if you're doing all of that, then, then Active Directory will still be a piece of, of the infrastructure. And honestly, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I think if you're going forward as you look at the way enterprises are moving into the cloud, um, some are lucky enough to, to completely move out of it and uh, on-prem and be, be completely in the cloud. But for most of you, it's likely to be a hybrid experience going forward. You've done a lot of investment in the last 10 to 15 years to have the Windows infrastructure in place. You've got a ton of applications, good, bad, new, old, legacy, they're all there. And many of those are here to stay. And you have to kind of look into that and, and kind of figure out where exactly do you sit? I mean, it's it's an easy thing to say, I just want to get rid of AD. I think I can do that. Um, it's it, it, there, there are a lot of things that, that you're using today that, that is still tied to that. And I think for certain customers, it, it may be worthwhile to investigate how, what it would take for you to completely move away from it. But then I think for a lot of you, it's 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 going to be a hybrid model. And, and there really isn't anything wrong with that. I think for you know having things sitting on-prem, there are reasons for it too, things like compliance. Um, um, data security and some of those, depending on um, the vertical that, that you're in, um, it, where, where if things are a bit more, you know, if, if they're a bit more sensitive, you may actually end up having things sitting on-prem. But that's the reality. So can, can you completely move out? Sure. Um, we've seen companies um, doing that. Um, but for a lot of you, I think it's, it's going to be a hybrid infrastructure. All right. With that, we're going to close out Q&A and be a good steward of your time. We're at two till. So I wanted to hear the last slide, give you a sense for next steps. Again, we mentioned an event survey that is on the both the link channel or the link panel as well as which we'll see here as well. Uh, feel free to fill that out here. It closes um, at 4 p.m. on the 27th, which is today. So you have about an hour to fill that out. And if you fill it out, you will be registered for our surface um, drawing here within the next hour or so, so I encourage you to do that. Obviously within there, it's a very short survey as far as feedback, ideas for further uh, webinars and presentations that we can deliver to our customers. 
as well as interest level in either Office 365 or many of the free strategy offerings or Octa trials that we discussed as well. That free half-day session or the three-day or the one-day avenues are in there for free to designate that within your response. Finally, stay tuned for two other webinars that we have coming up here, both in September and October. For further details on Octa within the enterprise, we'll continue to go over avenues as discussed today towards single sign-on, other detailed elements around SharePoint, Azure, and other topics that might be of note from an enterprise implementation. So with that, we'll let you finish out your surveys. We wanted to appreciate your, your time with us here today. And feel free to follow up with uh, myself or send notes on the panel, and we'll get back with you on details as appropriate. Thanks for your time, and have a wonderful afternoon.